Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. Well, I'm not that guy, but I'm this guy, Brian Sussman in for Dr. Savage, Savage Nation. Brian Sussman filling in. Dr. Savage back in the house tomorrow. Go to michaelsavage.com for all the latest news. Yesterday, of course, 9-11, and I, I don't want to forget about, can we, use, can we use the word bastard on the radio? Are we allowed to use that? Is that one of the seven words we can't use? I think when used properly, it could be used accordingly. Otherwise, I just got dumped, and you'll never know what I just said. Uh, there's, there's a little button we have in the radio world called the dump button. Just press that button. Everything's on delay. Ah, voila, it's like it never happened. Well, you think about what happened to us 16 years ago. I don't want to forget. I don't want to sanitize it. I don't want to rewrite history, pretend it never happened. No, this happened. And one of the things I am so grateful to God about regarding the Trump administration is the fact that we have some guys that appear to be very serious in terms of eradicating this plague from planet Earth. You know, the last guy in the White House, there were times when I know I scratched my head and would say, okay, what team is this guy on? But I don't think you can can have that feeling at all with the current bunch of guys that Trump has surrounded himself taking the fight to eliminate this crew. I'm thinking of the CIA director, Mike Pompeo. He says that senior al-Qaeda leaders should count their days. I like that kind of talk. Count your days, buddy. Count your days. If I were them, I would count my days. Clip eight. Take a listen. I mean, I never want to underestimate Al Qaeda itself. There, there are still senior leaders. Saw Wahiri is still around. So there's still some of the old guys from the battle days who are out there in tent. Um, but lots of other places, lots of other folks with the common thing of a mission to execute jihad against the West and the United States. And hunting those senior leaders has always been important. Um, is there a hunt on the way for Zawahiri and Bin Laden's son? Oh, yes, sir. Daily. Daily. Every day. My team, even as we sit here, is working diligently to find them and bring them to justice. Any positive signs? If I were them, I'd count my days. Count my days. Bring them to Gitmo. Take them down. You know, speaking of Gitmo, it's really interesting on my uh, local radio show. So Michael Savage started on KSFO in San Francisco in the mid-90s. I was, a, I was an avid listener back then. There was nothing like him on the radio. And I ended up working for that radio station, still do, host their morning show. On my morning show yesterday, I spoke with, uh, I shared interviews with the audience of a bunch of interviews I've done with survivors of 9-11 or people that lost a family on 9-11. And there's one interview I'll play for you a bit later. Uh, this had to do, it was a father whose son was on Flight 93, and Flight 93 is the flight that went down in that field in Pennsylvania. There's been a, a film made about it. Maybe you saw the film. I started to watch that film a few years ago, and I just I couldn't do it. I just I could not do it. It was just, it made me so angry, so angry, because that enemy is so real. They've got to be just purged from the earth. But the bottom line is, uh, as I was interviewing this gentleman, and again, we'll play portions of the interview a little later, uh, th this guy knows what time it is. He knows that we've got to defeat this enemy, and thank God we've got a, an administration that wants to do even that. Of course, then, the other story in the news, uh, I know we have a lot of listeners who have been impacted by, first of all, Harvey, and now Irma. And uh, these were major hurricanes, obviously. Uh, what I find amazing is the fact that, well, I don't find it amazing. Yes, I do find it amazing. I find it amazing that People are willing to turn a blind eye to science and right away decry man's carbon footprint for Harvey and Irma. It's ludicrous. Now, again, you know, Michael Savage has, Michael Savage is a real scientist with a real PhD. He understands critical thinking. He understands science. He could look at things like meteorology and climatology and, and form a good opinion. 
Well, I don't have a Ph.D., but I do have a degree in meteorology. And I've written a few books on the subject. But if I may just say regarding Irma, I'm not trying to downplay the severity of the conditions that exist, for example, in Florida right now. I'm not in no way, shape or form. I'm just saying to try pin frequency and intensity on global warming is folly. I mean, to look at these storms like that Bill Nye, the science guy, what a fool that man is. He's an actor. He knows nothing about science. There was actually a statement he made about uh, the warming of the Earth's atmosphere giving fuel to these storms. It's, it's not about the warming of the atmosphere. It's about the temperature of the water, which is as predictable as night and day. It really is. It's predictable as sunrise, sunset. You know exactly when the waters are going to warm, and you know when they're going to cool. It has to do with the Earth's rotation, prevailing winds. It has to do with all of that. And a hurricane cannot form without water 80 plus degrees. Can't. It's about the water temperature. And by the way, the warmer the water doesn't mean the stronger the hurricane. It just needs that warm water pool. And I will also just mention this other thing about the hurricane. It's a necessary component of the Earth's atmosphere. You have to have these hurricanes. It helps with the heat balance of the Earth's atmosphere at large. And it also keeps the waters of the Pacific, of the Atlantic, from becoming too warm. It takes all that heat, draws it up in the upper atmosphere, and then spreads it out. You know, like all kinds of weather, hurricanes simply happen. One could say, weather happens. Well, hurricanes happen. They're part of weather. And they're a necessary component of the Earth's atmosphere, as I just mentioned. On the average, seven hurricanes, close to seven hurricanes every four years, strike the United States. While about two major hurricanes cross the United States every three years. This just happens. It is weather. Now, a little later in the program, just another reason to stick around, I will tell you about the deadliest hurricane. I will tell you about the most intense hurricane. Irma was not it. I will talk to you about the greatest storm surge. It didn't occur in Jacksonville. I will talk to you about the earliest and latest hurricanes ever, and these facts will give you fuel so that you can fight these fools that are out there telling you it's your carbon footprint. It's your carbon footprint. In fact, there's actually a call right now to punish skeptics. To punish skeptics. A call to punish global warming skepticism as a criminal offense. Uh, There's a headline in the outline. The outline. Climate change denial should be a crime. Climate denialism is literally killing us. Murder is murder, and we should punish it as such. Unbelievable. Okay, so we've got that story for you on the Savage Nation. And, of course, the Pope has come out. Listen, when it comes to the Bible, when it comes to Catholicism, when it comes to that sector of theology, the Pope knows what he's talking about, I'm sure. But now he's venturing out of his realm of expertise, and he's weighing in on climate change. Sunday, Pope Francis said that political leaders and others who denied climate change reminded him of a passage from the Psalms about man's stubbornness. Man is stupid, the Bible says. It's like that when you don't want to see, you don't see. Well, when I look at climatology, when I look at meteorology, I'm looking at the facts. I'm looking at the facts. And I know for guys like Al Gore, facts are very inconvenient. Because why let the facts get in, in the way of a big story? The big story is man, man's carbon footprint. And what can man's carbon footprint do? Help a lot of people make a lot of money. So we'll talk about that on The Savage Nation. Of course, we'll open up the lines and talk to you as well. Phone number is 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Well, interesting. Let's take a call right off the bat here of the Savage Nation. Let's go to Patrick. He's out on the left coast, San Francisco Bay Area for uh, specific. Patrick, we're on the Savage Nation with you. Thanks for checking in. Um, you're talking about 9-11. So talk to us about 9-11 in the public schools. What did you hear in the greater San Francisco Bay Area? Were they talking about it? So thanks for having me, Sussman. Just Just as a point, I have three kids from second grade to eighth grade in the area. Not one of them got, not one of them had a story to tell about patriotism yesterday. 
Now, one of them had an assignment on, you know, anything historical about the event. It was all <laughs> passed off to all three of them. So, I, you know, I wanted to have a conversation with my kids when I got home. None of them had anything to say because they weren't taught anything in school uh, today, yesterday, about the event. And just, it hit me a little hard because it seems like... You know, it, what's amazing is uh, if anything was taught on 9-11, it was probably about tolerance and acceptance and all of that, when in fact we were struck by the most intolerant ideology the planet has ever known on 9-11. And I think lest we you see history repeat itself, we need to know about it. So I can understand, Patrick, why you're upset about this. Well, the frustration is that, as I feel as a nation, that we as a whole did forget, but we have this whole generation of kids who didn't grow up on that, who didn't experience it, and don't don't know what happened that day, you know? Yeah. And it's yeah. it's important to enrich that to our kids. I'm with you. Patrick, thanks for checking in here on the Savage Nation. Now, this, this hurts. I'll, I'll never forget. I mean, not to spend the entire program on 9-11, but as long as we're here, uh, we need to... Okay, you... you the kids in grade school, junior high, high school, they weren't around then. Maybe the juniors and seniors in high school were, but all the more reason to remind them about this enemy that still wants our hide to this very day. I mean, this war continues. The war continues. How we've let it go on this long is beyond me. Well, you had eight years of that other guy who wanted to dance around the edges, but enough is enough. So we'll continue to talk about this and talk to you about it as well. Uh, let's go to Elaine. I think we can squeeze Elaine in here. Elaine's WGOW in Tennessee. Elaine, you're on the Savage Nation. Brian Sussman filling in. Go right ahead. Hi, Brian. Good afternoon. I was calling because it's more of an observation that we're hearing so many things that are negative about this global warming and everything else. But what I'm interested to talk about is what other nation in the world could marshal its resources in the way America has done these last few weeks. Who can evacuate five million people? Think about that. So their population out of harm's way. Yes. Yeah, the resources down there to help and fix the problem. I, I, I think that's brilliant. Now, Elaine, without sounding microaggressive, may I ask where uh, you where you're from originally? I'm originally from England. Okay, so you have international experience. I'm just curious, if such a natural disaster were to hit the U.K., could the government have responded the way we did in Texas and Florida? Well, in my opinion, and not just mine, other people in England still live there that know. No, mm -hmm. in no mm -hmm. way, shape, or form. The answer is absolutely no. And just this weekend, I was talking to some folks from Australia. I asked them the same question. They said, no, not without foreign aid and intervention. What you've all done is mind-bogglingly fantastic, and I just don't hear that anywhere. I, I, you know what? It's best that we heard it from you because you have global experience, international experience, and you're absolutely right. The response from everything I've heard was just perfect. Now, isn't it interesting the media isn't so keen to talk about that because in the case of Florida, you have a Republican governor. And in the case of, of course, uh, Texas, same thing. And then, of course, a Republican president. So it's as if they really don't want to talk about that too much, if at all. Anyway, Elaine, thanks for your call in the Savage Nation. More calls just ahead. 855-400-SAVAGE. Brian Sussman, pleased to be filling in, as always, on this, the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Brian Sussman filling in for Dr. Savage. Michael's back tomorrow. And we were talking about yesterday's coverage of 9-11, if you're just joining us on the Savage Nation. Larry checks in, WABC. You know, I, go, go ahead with what you want to say, Larry. I'm in perfect agreement with you, but I'd rather hear it from your lips, not mine. Good, uh, thanks for joining us. 
Thank you, Brian. Uh, along the lines of whether or not anyone uh, today in school uh, was even born when 9-11 occurred is, is to me inconsequential. My father is a World War II combat vet. Uh, I was born after World War II. I didn't live through it. However, uh, growing up, uh, my father, my uncles, um, I, my grandparents, I heard the conversations. I, I learned firsthand that way from parents and family members, older family members, exactly what the sacrifice was for this country mm-hmm. and what it meant to maintain a, a free nation and, a, and the absolute ultimate profit paid by thousands and thousands of our young men, uh, both the full price and the price of their youth. Uh, that they gave up forever. Good point. Good point. And then, Larry, the other part of this is when we push aside 9-11 and don't talk about it, for example, in the schools, uh, it almost makes, I mean, there is there is something here wherein by the liberal ideology, the liberal mentality, almost wants to make you feel guilty like we did something wrong, like we provoked them, we brought this upon ourselves, correct? Absolutely my thoughts, but... Uh... And I, and I think that today people are, are so worried about being politically correct and not offend yep. anyone that they actually bend over backwards to turn it the other way. And it's, it, it couldn't be damaging our young people more than to... You're right. You're right. Larry, thanks for checking in from WABC. I agree. You've got to... Again, the classic Karl Marx line, history means nothing. That is, that is a quote from Marx. History means nothing. Now, why does history mean nothing? Because they, the conservative, the conservative mentality, the conservative worldview looks at the world through the lens of history. Okay, this worked. This didn't work. Don't want to do that again. Whew, no. The liberal ideology, history means nothing. You know, listen. I know socialism hasn't worked. I know communism has communism hasn't worked. But we can, we can do this. We can do this. Oh, Hillary's. You know, out in the stump right now promoting this book. What happened? What happened? (laughs) Talk about a rewrite of history. We're going to talk about this coming up in the next segment. You will definitely want to stick around. Always a pleasure. Always a lot of fun. Brian Sussman on this, The Savage Nation. Join The Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. No, oh, this is fun. Brian Sussman filling in for Dr. Michael Savage. Always a pleasure to get behind this microphone and talk to America. MichaelSavage.com for all the latest news. Phone number 855 855- 400 Savage 855 400 7282. I want to talk about Hillary. What happened? The book, <laughs> the rewriting of history. <laughs> but before we do that, we were just talking about Hurricane Irma and Hurricane Harvey. And quite frankly, uh, the, the response by the federal government, the state government, and the local municipalities, I think, was tremendous. Media doesn't know what to do with this, right? Because you've got Republican governors, you've got the Republican president, things work pretty smoothly, it was not a cluster, there were no major screw-ups. What do they do? Well, they turn the page. But Kevin is calling right now. Kevin, thanks for checking in. You're about to make a statement regarding global warming. Now, The Pope has come out, others are coming out saying climate change deniers need to be dealt with accordingly. Kevin, go right ahead. Your point, please, on the Savage Nation. Appreciate you, Brian. You know, what's amazing is every human being, good, evil, whoever you are, and this is, I'm going to get spiritual with the listeners here, but isn't it amazing how God puts every person to sleep every night? And what I'm saying by that is, these global warming and Hillary and Gore and all these guys, do they really think that they can change the weather? Let me share this with you. I went and saw a movie this weekend, one of the, you know, It's coming out and all these other movies. You know the trailers that they play? Well, there's this movie coming out 
where there's these satellites in the sky that shoot these things down into the ocean. They can make the ocean freeze. They can make the ocean warmer, all this other stuff. And it's just amazing how Hollywood is trying yeah. to brainwash the children, you know? Yeah. And I'm there with my yeah. daughter, and it's like every 10 minutes I'm saying something to her, look at this, Angel, look at that, look at how they're trying to change your thinking. And yep. I really hope that the children and the young men and women today have the open mind to look at that because it's, it's coming at them hard. Well, it's that's why we need good parents. I'm just saying we need good you know, parents that are dedicated to their kids' complete upbringing like you. And thanks for being with us on The Savage Nation. No, it's so true. So true. When you, I, I've always thought it was arrogant of humans to believe that they could alter the climate of the world. Alter it on the micro scale? Absolutely. But not the global scale. No. No. Uh, well, all right. If people want to go there, I'm willing. Here's Joel, KBOZ in Montana. Joe, Joel, it's uh, good to hear from you. I'm going to be up in your great state in a couple of weeks. I'm looking forward to it. Well, it has been very smoky here. But listen, you uh, mentioned about the Pope saying some things that he shouldn't. And one thing he did that was very certainly wrong was that he i happened to be watching tv one day he was on his plane and he said that anybody who believed in the the, the, the death in the death best anybody who believed in the death penalty was committing serious sin well he is so doggone wrong the catechism of the catholic church approves of the death penalty in rare circumstances but they do and it's even provable in the bible even our lord before Pilate, when Pilate was angry with Jesus for what he had said, warned him, he said, do you not know, that is, Pilate, quote, do you not know that I have the power of life and death over you, end quote. But then Jesus answered him, you would have no power over me were it not given to you by my Father in heaven, end quote. In other words, Jesus recognized power comes from heaven to the state, and they do have the power of life and death over us. And the Pope had no business making that statement, and it makes me feel bad. Well, you know, it's interesting, and you can, uh, thank you for your call. You, you don't have to go to the New Testament for a, a little statement on capital punishment. Uh, you can go to the book of Genesis, first book of the Bible, written by Moses. Genesis 9-6, whoever sheds the blood of man, by man shall his blood be shed. For God made man in his own image. I mean, this is, this is essentially the first, one of the first, quote-unquote, laws in the Bible. I'll read that again for some of you who have never been there. Whoever sheds the blood of men, by man shall his blood be shed. For God made man his own Im image. In other words, life is so precious. It's the most precious of things. And if you dare take someone's life, sorry guy, but you got to pay with your own. That's, that's the first law of, of humanity. But of course, we've, far dri we've completely drifted from that. Uh, Hillary, what happened? Great. So it's a 450-page book attempting to excuse her failed 2016 press. I, I just laugh. I just laugh when I think about this. Um, but it's it's a rewrite of history in the sense that you know 450 pages seems like you could include pretty much everything. From what I understand, she completely ignores one of the election's biggest scandals. This is when Donna Brazil, Donna Brazil was the Democrat National Committee chairwoman. Okay, that's huge, right? And she was leaking debate questions to Hillary during the Democrat primary. Okay, folks, you want to talk about influencing an election? How about that? Nope, Hillary doesn't want to go there. But this is a fact. Brazil leaked questions to Hillary before two different primary debates. And we only found out about this through WikiLeaks, right? The published, stolen Clinton emails. Now, um, and by the way, we still to this day don't know who did it. Oh, Russia. Do you know that for a fact? No. But no matter, it doesn't matter. Somehow, I mean, we all have our suspicions. But the bottom line is, WikiLeaks gets these and we learn that Donna Brazil leaked debate questions to Hillary during the Democrat primary on two different primary debates, only came out through the, uh, the WikiLeaks. But Clinton writes that revelation of history right out of her book. 
<laughs> um, by the way, these were emails from Brazil to uh, John Podesta, I believe, right? These were John Podesta emails. That's where we found out about these. The only thing she says about John's emails, in the end, though, most of John's emails were boring. They revealed the nuts and bolts of a campaign at work with staffers debating policies, editing speeches, and kibitzing about the daily ups and downs of the election. No, they were damning. My gosh, this is cheating. This is influencing an election. She ignored the fact that Brazil, who was working as a CNN contributor at the same time she was the DNC chair. Think about that. You're head of the DNC and you're a contributor on CNN. She ignored the fact that Brazil leaked questions to Clinton before two Democrat primary debates, March 6th, March 13th, 2016, in the heat of the primary campaign. And by the way, CNN hosted both debates. Okay, this is damning. If you want the nuts and bolts on that, I'll drill down a little further. What happened in the, uh, in, in the emails? Brazil informed Clinton and, well, their, uh, specifically the campaign communications director, Jennifer Palmieri, that, quote, a woman with a rash. Now, listen to this. A woman with a rash would ask Clinton a question during the following night's debate. Her family has lead poison, and she will ask what, if anything, will Hillary do as president to help the people of Flint? So this was a complete setup. They selected the person, knew what her question was ahead of time, and were coaching up Hillary on how to respond. Talk about influencing election. From time to time, I get the questions in advance, uh, Brazil wrote in this email. Here's one that worries me about HRC, Hillary Rodham Clinton. And then she threw in a question about the death penalty because they wanted Hillary to make sure she answered that correctly. So come on. Meantime, Hillary's out there, a New York Post story. Hillary Clinton says she's convinced that the Trump campaign cooperated with Russia. Well, of course. This was part of the template from the beginning. Blame it on Trump and Russia. She said, I'm convinced of it. Oh, you're convinced of it. Way to go. Uh, who else does she blame in this What Happened book? She blames Chief Justice John Roberts. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, listen, I blame Chief Justice John Roberts for Obamacare. How about that? By the way, the, the, okay, and then let me see. What else? What else? What else? What else? Um, okay, we'll get to some other things. It, you know, it's, what, the other thing, I was just having this conversation this morning with someone who reminded me. He said, hey, I want to tell you about we Trump supporters, okay? We Trump supporters, we're not, Demo we're not Democrats or Republicans, we're Trump supporters, period. This is what the Democrats have to, they are steering and veering so far to the left that those who once were Democrats and now voted for Trump ain't coming back anytime soon. In fact, there's another statistic out. Okay, let, let me get this one for you. This has to do with, okay, this is a sign that the Democrats are going way too far. Extensive new Pew Research Center analysis. This was released on Friday. No one was paying attention to the news on Friday because everyone is focused on Irma. 48% of Democrat voters overall now identify as liberals. I, I know that this audience probably thinks, well, the Democrat Party is liberal. Well, the party leaders are certainly way liberal. But those who are registered as Democrats aren't necessarily that liberal. So now 48% of Democrat voters identify as liberals. A decade ago, that number was 32%. In 2000, it was 28%. So more people identifying with liberals, therefore alienating those who are not liberal. But there's another interesting dynamic at work. 55% of white Democratic voters say they are liberal. 55%. Composed, uh, compared to 28% of black Democrats and 41% of Hispanic Democrats. So I think this is a sign that the party's moving way, way too far. And to me, it's just another sign that in the midterms and, and the next general, they don't got nothing to run on. They're going to get their butts beat. That's just my take. Maybe you have a different one. 855-400-SAVAGE is the phone number. Okay, a couple more items for you in the news that we can uh, dive into a little bit later. This is so good. Okay, you ready for this? Black Lives Matter. 
their leader. And by the way, I did not know that their their leader um, was a uh, is a well. Uh, there's a one of the leaders is a transgender immigrant born and raised in Canada. That transgender immigrant born and raised in Canada, who's a Black Lives Matter leader, is married to a woman who is also the co-founder of Black Lives Matter. So I, I didn't know that this gender thing was going on amongst the leadership of Black Lives Matter. But now they're out there saying that white privilege, instead of saying white privilege, which is something they've been coaching their people to say, the new term is going to be white supremacy. No longer white privilege, it's going to be white supremacy. So we'll talk about that coming up on The Savage Nation. Also, <laughs> also, gay right groups have come out against a controversial study that found sexual orientation can be read from people's faces. So this is an artificial intelligence study. Used AI and facial recognition algorithms. They looked at 35,000 pictures of men and women at a dating site who identified themselves as gay or straight. The AI model correctly distinguished between gay and straight men 81% of the time and gay and straight women with 71% accuracy. And so, <laughs> and so, and so now uh, you have groups like GLAAD and the Human Rights Campaign denouncing the study as junk science and dangerous. <laughs> They're concerned that it could be used as a weapon against gay and lesbians. <laughs> well, <laughs> so here, here's the deal, folks. One's facial expressions are, are a representation of one's heart or attitude or demeanor or temperament or disposition. So why it, this isn't a diss. I just think it is what it is, and the computers are apparently picking it up. <laughs> Brian Sussman filling in on this, the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Apple, of course, came out with the new phone today and the new TV and the new watch. Brian Sussman filling in for Dr. Savage on the Savage Nation. He's back tomorrow. Of course, I broadcast from KSFO, Michael's flagship station, which is right in the Silicon Valley. I have a lot of friends who work for Apple. They're all all excited about this. <laughs> I'm reading another story, which we'll get into. Uh, it's a market watch story from today. Headline, Why Apple's New iPhone is Bad for the Environment. <laughs> Well, their point is, since 2007, Apple has manufactured, uh, since 2007, there have been 7.1 billion smartphones manufactured. That's enough to equip every person in the world with a device. But they're talking about the stuff in the iPhone and these phones at large, because it's planned obsolescence, right? So they want you to get a new one and ditch the old one, and you're supposed to recycle the old one, but most people don't. We'll talk about that. Black Lives Matter. Oh, here's one for you. You ready? Here's their leader. This is Janaya Khan. Janaya is trans. I don't know transition from what to two, but I just mentioned that because it is a part of the story. This is the Black Lives Matter. Stop saying white privilege and start saying white supremacy. Clip 15. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. Actually, it's Savage's friend, 
from San Francisco, Brian Sussman. <laughs> I host the morning show on KSFO. And Michael, of course, has been, uh, he's, he's been the guy on KSFO since he started his show as a local program in the mid-90s. Mike's back tomorrow, 855-400-7282. That's the number, 855-400-7282. Uh, we were talking about Irma. It's interesting, a caller in the last hour checked in, originally from the U.K., was just, you know, big applause for the rescue efforts and the cleanup efforts from both the federal government, the state governments, local governments, etc. Top notch. Good job. Smooth as silk. No one seems to be complaining. Media doesn't know where to go with this. Ah, turn a blind eye. We got Republican governors and Republican president. Forget about it. Move on. But there is now, of course, this cry from the Al Gore's of this world and others saying, well, clearly, clearly, this is a sign of global warming. And, of course, the Pope, who is an expert on being a Pope and Catholicism and theology, decides to weigh in, and he says we need to listen to the scientists. And I'm saying, sir, it would probably be wise to stay out of this field. Stay, stay with what you're an expert in, you know, as the vicar of Christ. Just stay right there. Bobby's listening from WABC. Bobby, thanks for being with us on the Savage Nation. Go right ahead, please. Hey, you doing? Um, you know what I find pretty funny with this Pope thing? Um, he goes ahead and he questions Donald Trump, saying that it's really pro-life because of his stand on global warming. So the Pope says, if someone is a bit doubtful, this is a quote, if someone's a bit doubtful, ask the scientists, the Pope said in response to a question about natural net disasters. Mm -hmm. Now, here's my question. If we're supposed to ask the scientists, about climate change, why doesn't he have, why doesn't the Pope have us ask the scientists about belief in God? Where 72% are atheists, 22% are agnostic, and 7% believe in God. Yeah, think about that. So why is he having us listen to scientists, so many of whom don't believe in God? Exactly. Okay. I'm with you. It's the well, listen, um, that's a reasonable line of questioning. I, I'm with you, Bobby. Thanks for checking in on the Savage Nation. Listen, at the end of the day, let's let's be clear what this is about. When Al Gore rampaged across the cultural landscape on the heels of his devastating loss to Bush, people forget about this, uh, with eye-popping pompousness, demanding that Americans get with his so-called green program, this millionaire from Tennessee insisted he was only motivated by concern for the planet. Really? Really? I'm reading from uh, the back cover of my book, Eco-Tyranny. As many have suspected, the whole global warming charade has been much less to do with saving the planet than with profoundly changing America for the worse. Th this, this, is, this is a well-concocted, well-crafted scheme put in place first by the United Nations and adopted by so many world leaders, including the likes of Mikhail Gorbachev, to they're, they're using the environment as their best key to turn the lock that opens us up to global socialism or communism, if you will. That's, that's what this is about. That's what this is about. It has nothing to do with the environment has nothing to do with being green, except for those who can make lots of green out of global warming. Well, uh, let's go to, um, I want to just take one more of these. This is uh, KMAJ in Kansas. Jim is with us. Jim, you're on the Savage Nation. Go right ahead. Yes, thank you for, the, for taking the call. About global warming, the sun's output is never the same. So to get a correct figure on what's happening here for our climate, we have to factor in what the sun is doing. And nobody, nobody is giving us those numbers. And that would completely reveal the farce of the global well, warming. Now, here, Jim, Jim, to your point, and thanks for calling, to your point, there are people giving us those numbers, but they've been dismissed as kooks. I'm thinking of uh, one of my colleagues, Willie Soon. Uh, Harvard, okay, Ph.D. And uh, he, he is, he, I'm not sure where he presently teaches, but he was at Harvard a few years ago at least. Maybe he's still there. 
but Willie Soon is an astrophysicist. Okay, he studies the sun. And uh, a solar physicist, I should say. He studies the sun. Uh, well, at any rate, no, he's an astrophysicist. So, but he studies the sun, and he he has written extensively about the variability of of the sun's output. And he, like virtually everyone in that community, the astrophysicist community, I mean, you want consensus? Go to that community, because these are all people who say, no, 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 no. It's global global warming is not a product of mankind. It's a product of the sun. That big ball of fire up there. Big ball of fire. David's on WABC. Now, David, you agree with the Pope. Do you agree with him on climate change, or do you agree with him on, um, you know, I mean, he is the Pope. He knows something about the Catholic Church. Is he right or wrong about global warming? Am I on? Yes, right now. You're on the air. Okay, okay yeah. Uh, Pope Francis is right. Hey, the Catholic Church runs about 2,000 universities around the world. Some of the best universities in the world are Roman Catholic, Jesuit, Franciscan, etc. Uh, so there's the tens of thousands of scientists within the Catholic Church that agree that climate change is definitely contributing. Uh, humans are contributing to the change of the global temperature. Like in the uh, Caribbean, the ocean, the, the sea is so warm that all the moistness is building up into the sky, uh, causing deluges of rain on us. So to criticize... Okay, well, first, just cut him off. You, just, David, I'm sorry, but you were, you were making a statement, then you were adding your own opinion, which was not based on science. Uh, as I mentioned, I think this in the first hour, I was talking about hurricanes. Uh, they are, they are, they, if you believe in creation, and I guess as a Catholic you do, hurricanes were put in place by God to transfer heat from the oceans to the upper atmosphere, which could be then spread around the planet to distribute the heat to, you know, make life more habitable in more places. And also to relieve the ocean of the buildup of heat that naturally occurs during the summer seasons. That's it. That's what it's all about. There's a story today that just, this got my attention. I'm one of those guys that Dr. Savage is flying today, okay? I'm sure when he flies, he does things right. Uh, I, and he probably, he probably has a way to bypass TSA. Maybe it's a private airplane. Maybe he does, what do they call it with the... Um, where a, a pre pre check pre check I think it's pre check where you can just bypass the TSA uh, because you've already been checked out I've got to go I've got to get that I'm one of these guys just admittedly I get to the airport the anxiety level just naturally rises right off the bat it's not a fear of flying it's just being around all these people who I don't know and I don't quite frankly care to be with and then being treated like a criminal through the TSA process you know I'm guilty. Without uh, and I have to prove myself innocent. I can't stand that. There is n there is nothing about me that looks like I'm a risk to anybody or a threat to anybody. But I got to go through this procedure. I have to take off my shoes. Now listen, I, I'm also going to tell you. Besides having the anxiety, it's probably my anxiety. I should say is probably heightened by the fact that I'm somewhat of a germaphobe. I don't like taking off my shoes and walking with my socks in the airport. Because I'm looking at all these other schmoes, and some of them haven't had a bath in who knows how many days, changed their socks, might have athletes foot weather. I got I have a system that I've developed to avoid that. I take off my shoes and quickly slip on some big, thick socks that I carry in my travel bag so I don't have to walk on the floor. I do that. I do the hand sanitizer. I wipe down the seat and the, and the tray in front of me when I get on the plane. I'm that guy, okay? I'm just admittedly that guy. But I don't like going through the TSA. I can't stand it. I didn't like those x-ray machines in the beginning because they wouldn't tell you how much x-ray was being emitted. Well, now they're not using those types of machines any longer. And in most of the airports, they're replacing the machines so they don't have the naked pictures because they did have the naked pictures before. The guys working at a TSA would get a hood out of that, especially with good-looking women. So they're changing that. But what now they're implementing is this enhanced pat down now my morning show in san francisco i have a, a cohort a colleague she's hilarious and that's why she's on the show because she's hilarious her name's katie 
Katie was traveling recently from San Francisco to Los Angeles, then Los Angeles back to San Francisco. It happens every time she travels. She's a good-looking gal. Every time she gets the pat, she's pulled out of line, she gets the pat down. But as she describes it, it's not a pat down, it's a feel up. It's intrusive, it's crazy, it's ridiculous. So I'm reading this story in the, in the, uh, in the Weekly Standard this morning. Uh, this, is, this guy is flying this weekend, he's in Kansas City. This particular author, what's the guy's name? Uh, John McCormick. He's in Kansas City. And uh, he goes through the metal, metal, metal detector in the TSA pre-security line and then randomly selected to see if a machine would detect explosives on his hands. Randomly suggested, uh, selected. This is a huge part of the problem with TSA. Why, why don't we use screening? Randomly selected. Oh, here's a guy that looks like he's been playing around with explosives. Give me a break. Anyway, we're going to talk more about this in just a moment. I can't wait to hear from you because maybe we even have some people working for TSA who can help us out. Brian Sussman filling in on this, The Savage Nation. Join The Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Brian Sussman filling in for Dr. Michael Savage. Michael's back tomorrow. Okay, perfect, perfect. We have got a guy calling in. I knew this would happen. Uh, This is a TSA agent checking in from WABC. Boris, are you there? Yes, sir. Okay, great. I'm so glad you called. And I was hoping, knowing this audience, I knew we'd probably get somebody from TSA. So let me tell you what this guy, this guy's writing in the Weekly Standard, and he's talking about his situation in Kansas City, and he's talking about the um, the enhanced pat down. So I'll just read what he says, and then allow you to comment accordingly. The agent runs his hand inside the passenger's waistband, and also runs his hand up the back of each leg until he meets resistance, and does the same thing in front of each leg. And then the TSA agent swipes the front of his hands three or four times right over the zipper area of this particular guy's uh, khakis. So the, the, the TSA agent told this reporter exactly what he was going to do before he did it. But I'm just saying, why do you have to do it, Boris? Well, first of all, I'd like to say I don't believe he pr- follows proper procedure. Not to give away any of our procedural secrets or security okay. secrets, but the way you're supposed to do it is after you pass them down, you're supposed to swipe your own hands and you can swipe their hands. Because once you're touching the person... Any traces of explosives, if they may have been there, would have been picked up on your gloves or on their hands once you okay. contact with such a substance. And so, um, so talk to me about the pat down then, because I, Boris, you can see. I mean, anybody, including yourself, you would be bothered if this was happening to you. So, talk to me about the pat down in this particular case, as the reporter is describing it. Well, I mean, I guess I would be bothered by it, but I mean, I understand that security comes at a price. And people often forget that our country is at war, and we have enemies, and nobody... There's no such thing as a profile of a terrorist. There's domestic terrorists, there are, you know, there's foreign terrorists. Uh, I mean, who looks suspicious these days? If you wanted to do something, you're not going to dress up like, you know, the average, what you would picture as a terrorist. Well, you're right. I mean, the average Muslim does shave his beard and take off his turban before he goes out there and does his evil deeds. But in, in terms of the vast majority of terrorist episodes around the world, there, there certainly is a profile. Oftentimes that profile is, is, uh, has, has some variability, but more often than not, there is a profile, and I'm hoping that you guys are paying attention to that. Well, Maybe you can't tell us, but I'm, I'm hoping you do. I mean, we have certain things where we, we don't operate um, according to prejudice. You know, like I said, I believe that, you know, there might be a typical profile that pipe people might imagine, but I believe that anybody can um, be, you know, a suspect. And if you're trying to carry something out, you wouldn't try to bring attention to yourself. And if anybody has ever heard, you know, it's been a long time since this has happened, but we have had a person that tried to 
put a bomb explosive in their underwear as well as in their right. Feet, which is why we created these procedures. And believe you me, I don't want to touch you as much as you don't want to be touched. <laughs> okay, Boris, I have to ask you this question. In the event I was pulled aside for the enhanced pat-down, uh, could I ask, as a man, could I ask for a woman to do it? Because, honestly, I, I don't, I'm not meaning to sound phobic in any way, shape, or form. I'd really and truly rather have a woman do this to me than a guy. Could I, pr could I ask for a woman? I imagine you would. I would probably as well, but... You know, due to, I suppose, liability issues and, you know, maybe sexual harassment claims, that's a very rare case where that would happen. Exigent circumstances when maybe possibly there's absolutely no other males available to do so. What if, what if here's another situation, Boris, what if you had a, a person, a guy, who has been sexually molested in the past by another guy, and they really and truly have a problem with any guy getting anywhere close to their privates. How would that be handled? You know, I haven't really come across that situation, so I couldn't tell you. But, I mean, in a situation like that, personally, I would just hand you over to my supervisor. And, you know, they can do whatever they see fit. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Hey, Boris, thanks for checking in on the Savage Nation. See, I knew we'd get these callers. And there are more. And I hope you guys will hold on because I really want to talk to you. Uh, this, this again, is is the TSA just the illusion of security? You heard what Boris just said. You know, there's a price to pay for our security. I think that's what he said, price to pay for our security. But how much of what TSA does is actually an illusion? It's just meant to make us feel as if we're secure. I think it's a valid question, and we'll dive into that one as well. Brian Sussman here on the Savage Nation. Always a great time, as you know. Don't forget, check out michaelsavage.com for all the latest headlines and to pre-order Dr. Savage's upcoming book. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Savage Nation, Brian Sussman filling in for Dr. Savage, who's back in the saddle tomorrow. Looking forward to that. But looking forward to the next bit of time we have on the Savage Nation. First portion has been great. Always wonderful to talk to the Savage Nation members, family, if you will. Been talking about TSA. Read a story this morning in the Weekly Standard from a guy who was in Kansas City traveling this weekend, and he got the, I mean, he got the full enhanced pat down. And they were touching his junk big league. And I'm thinking, if this would happen to me, I may have a reaction. I, I'm not, and I don't really understand why we're doing this. Especially we have these x-ray machines that they say are so darn good. Well, why don't we use those machines and call it a day? This guy was pulled out of line because there was fear of, ex well, he was randomly selected because, well, maybe he's got explosives on him. And they did the scan. There were no explosives, and I guess that wasn't good enough. Uh, so now they're touching him everywhere, including in his crotch multiple times. Nan is checking in. Nan, thanks for being with us from Southern Nevada. I understand you were mistakenly flagged for having explosives while trying to board a flight. What happened to you? Well, first of all, I, I, have, to, I have to give a little premise. I was in Iraq. And so I was leaving Iraq, and I was in a very volatile, near a volatile zone, where I'm sure chemicals, you know, fighting chemicals are floating in the air like dust, okay? So I don't blame them for profiling me when they saw that my passport visa was from Iraq, okay? Okay, good. <laughs> and, of course, I, I tested positive. Well, um, and they, you know, they do. They swab your, your hands and your waist and your back of your legs and... You know, they go through this whole routine, and I just stood there and thought, well, whatever will be. Now, keeping in mind that I am 72 years old, very white hair, and I'm five foot one, and I can barely, barely carry a carry-on, okay? So I just thought it was kind of humorous. They all stood around. Security in Vienna just stood around and looked at me. They weren't quite sure what they were supposed to do next, pointed at me and told everybody to get away from me. <laughs> And <laughs> just stood there 
know what Get away. She's a little gray-haired white woman from Iraq. Exactly. And after they discussed it for a few moments, they did swab me back around again and, and uh, have another conversation and then uh, looked at my passport and I did say, you know, that I've been in Iraq and that I certainly I have a feeling I would test positive and, um, you know, do whatever you need to do. And they let me go. I mean, they were re- reasonable. Now, the reason why I say that is, Okay, now wait a second. What if your name would have been the name that we, you know, so many of these terrorists are named Mohammed, yeah. uh, very thick accent, can't speak English, all that well. Would it have been a different story at that point in time? I'm just curious. You no, know, it's uh, to me, personally, since I've worked in security in Iraq, I know there are a lot of bad guys. And if they would have pulled me in another room and undressed me, I would have said, okay, go for it, you know, because I know what they're up against. But if they had been uh, from Iraq and Iraqis, I don't blame them. I, I have no right. problem. We are in a mess. We're in a mess. So I'm guessing, uh, Nan, I'm guessing you're in military, correct? Or you have some tie to the military? You're 72 years old, but there's got to be some connection to national security, the military, something. Actually, um, I, I was in the Foreign Service for years. And okay. And they called back on special assignments from time to time. I, well, you must be pretty good if you're if you're if you're old enough to be well retired and they're still calling you back. You must know a few things. Well, at least I know how to do the job, you know. Yeah, good for you. Good for you. I love it. Nan, thanks for your call on the Savage Nation. I want to move on, but the point is um, when it comes to this, the the one thing that really bothers me about uh, the way our TSA rolls and this is nothing against individual TSA members. I'm, I know we have uh, members of that team, employees who are great. And like any field, you've got a lot of slackers. Uh, what I, I, I like the people when I go through TSA who are serious about their job and are helpful in the process. What I don't like with TSA are the people that are talking about how much vacation time they've accrued. And I've, I've, I've experienced that more than once. And some of you who listen to the program work for TSA probably work with those guys. You know, typical government, they've become typical government bureaucrats. But all of this, of course, is the result of 9-11. 9-11, right? Uh, Yesterday, the 16th anniversary. On my morning show on KSFO, I I played portions of interviews that I've conducted with survivors of 9-11. I mean, people who were in the towers. And then also... um, a gentleman whose son, Todd Beamer, was the guy who said, let's roll, let's roll. That was Flight 93, where they attacked the cockpit and they were able to uh, get control of the plane away from the terrorists who apparently were going to use that plane to plow into a building in D.C., yet to be determined, maybe the White House. I know the White House was evacuated. Uh, I have a friend who was doing, literally, a gentleman I know, was hosting a barbecue that day. I mean, he was the uh, the caterer for a barbecue that was going to go down on the White House lawn, and everyone was going to be there. This is a very little told story. I don't know if anybody's ever told it besides me. But my friend uh, from the Perini Ranch Steakhouse in Buffalo Gap, Texas, was called in to uh, cater this meal for the president and the Congress, and I believe even the Supreme Court. Everyone was going to be there. Everyone. And they got word that a plane was coming in, and everybody scrambled. And my friend was told, just run. The, the, the directions he got from security, run, run, plane coming our way. Well, I believe that was Flight 93. Could have been the flight that went into the Pentagon. I'm not sure. But everybody was told to run. Todd Beamer was the guy that the GTE mobile operator, you know, they had the, the air phones on the planes back then. Uh she was with Todd. She was talking to Todd. She had prayed with Todd, and she heard him say, let's roll in their conversation. I spoke with Todd's dad, David Beamer. Take a listen to clip five. One of the blessings of that morning is that uh, Flight 93 was somewhat delayed in its departure. It was, a, you know, took off a bit late. And that led to the fact that some, some of the passengers on the, on the plane, uh, when calling their loved ones and saying, hey, our plane's been hijacked, they learned that two planes had already slammed into the World Trade Center. Mm. So 
understanding uh, the reality of their situation, uh, concluding that the enemy was lying because the hijackers were saying, this is a normal hijacking, we're going back to Newark where our demands are going to be met. Hmm. Forty-three people on the flight figured out that wasn't the case. And so in the, in the space of 30 minutes from the time that they understood the reality of the situation until they had come together and devised a counterattack plan and successfully executed it. Um, so, you know, the passengers and the, and, and the crew of Flight 93 had the chance to fight back. That was a blessing. Mm-hmm. They did so. Uh, and that saved untold number of lives on the ground. The counterattack was a victory, but as we know, uh, everybody everybody died because Flight 93 ended up in this quiet meadow just outside of Shanksville, Pennsylvania, plowing some 50 feet into the ground. And as you mentioned, uh, uh, in a telephone conversation with a GTE telephone supervisor who had this conversation with our son Todd, where Todd prayed with her, described the nature of the situation, gave information as to the nature of the hijackers. Uh, but she also then heard from that from that phone, um, you know, the, are you are you guys ready? Let's roll. Which was, you know, a call to action, and uh, that's what forty free people on Flight ninety three did. Um, they saved many lives. They they all they became soldiers. They uh, they were killed in action. They. They died in they died in battle. That was the first really that was the first battle in the war against Islamic terror on Flight ninety three. That's one way to look at it. Now that's David Beamer. His son Todd was on the plane, Flight ninety three, and he was the guy who said, Let's roll as you just heard. But let's continue here because David Beamer gets it. He says Islam, radical Islam, Islam is a threat to the West, and he's worried that Americans are in total denial about it. Listen to this in the next clip. We do have an enemy. Uh, it's a, a, a significant and very real, clear and present danger, an ongoing threat to our republic. Islamic radicals, devout Muslims who have a, have a cause uh, and have an objective, and their objective is to, for the world, including us in the United States, to submit to Islam, it's the theopolitical system, its rule of law, Sharia law, to give up all the liberties that, that we have enjoyed for the, the existence of our country and certainly for the lifestyles that we and our families have come to appreciate. The enemy is real. They have not given up. They have not surrendered. The same enemy has been attacking us for decades, going back to our Marines in Beirut, our embassies, World Trade Center 1993, the USS Cole, and of course then the Big Bang was uh, 9-11. And I am very concerned that whereas America was perhaps asleep as to the threat, now I'm concerned we're not so much asleep as we are in a state of denial. I know that so many, many Americans uh, talk about, you know, well, Islam is a religion of peace. Well, it's not. It's much more than a, a religion with early writings. It's a, it's a system of politics and culture and law. And for us to deny the threat, we do so at our peril. This is a guy tell it like it is. Now, he would know, right? That's David Beamer. His son Todd was on Flight 93 on 9-11. They crashed into that meadow in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. He continues here. He explains what we should learn from 9-11. This is my interview with David Beamer. He says, we need to be wary of radical Islam because it has infiltrated our culture. Our culture. Take a listen to the next clip. My message is that um, uh, hand-wringing or uh, denial are not good strategies. My message is that we in America need to be educated. Ignorance is, uh, can no longer be an excuse. I would encourage everyone to, uh, to read, to study, to understand in truth what the ultimate objective of Islamic fundamentalists and radicals is understand what is the mission of the Muslim Brotherhood organization, some of whom even occupy significant positions of power and influence in our own government. We must inform and educate ourselves so that we can recognize the real enemy that is there and to recognize how this enemy is infiltrating our our schools, our universities, our our textbooks to legitimize and make us believe that uh, there's something that they're not. Get yourselves 
educated. A little listening, leading, and learning, please. Yes, absolutely. David Beamer, he knows about this. His son Todd was on Flight 93 on that fateful day. So the bottom line is, I'm thankful to God, honestly, that we have somebody in the White House who gets it. You know, Donald Trump understands the enemy we face, and he's letting his generals take charge. And I love the fact that we're not telegraphing our intentions to these guys. And I love the fact that we have a CIA director, and that of Pompeo, who you heard early in the program, talking about the fact that, uh, no, 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 their days are numbered. Al-Qaeda's leadership, their days are numbered. I like that talk, and I believe with this administration, it's not just talk, it is action. It's action. So let's quickly go to Taylor, checking in from KBET in Las Vegas. Taylor, we were talking about TSA. Is it an illusion of security, or are these guys really doing a valuable service to all of us? Go ahead, please. Well, I, I don't think that's an, an and or. It's just a and, probably. Um, obviously, an illusion is actually also does a service towards security. Whereas, Good point. You know, it, 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 it creates a preventative situation. Um, you know, they don't they don't necessarily know what the actual. Um, but in your particular case, Taylor, your wife is a TSA agent, correct? That's correct, and I'm an airline pilot, yeah. For the last oh, okay, good. All right, we get a twofer here. So, yeah, that's right. You're, I mean, you're, you're, the, you're the guy flying people around, and she's the person getting people onto your planes. Yeah, is it a situation where we have to err on the side of safety at all costs? Well, you know, not at all costs. Obviously, there's always that, that happy medium, you know, where we have to judge what the public will allow. And then, mm -hmm. you know, what we can actually get away with as far as security. Um, you, know, it's, you know, the public will allow more if an extreme situation happens, obviously. But the longer it goes and the more people forget, the right. stringent or things, things will become. And then, of course, if there's a threat that comes up, then, of course, then they'll have some certain things or whatever. Um, as far as I think I heard a few people earlier, um, Boris, I think, I don't know if he was a TSA agent or not, or TSO, but... Um, he was talking about, you were asking him about if it was a, a female wanting a male or a male wanting a female. Um, uh, I think that also gets into, like, the transgender situation. Oh, gosh. It was... <laughs> did, 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 you're probably right. I'm laughing because what a world. I mean, I was the guy who said, I, I think I'd like to have a woman pat me down as opposed to a guy, and now we have to worry about transgender issues. But you're probably exactly right. Taylor, i got to run here at the Savage Nation. A little bit out of time for this next segment. But we'll continue with more. Plus, we're going to talk about this Apple unveiling today. What's this all about? How, bi how big of a deal is this, really? It's all just ahead on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Michael's back tomorrow. Brian Sussman filling in just to kind of seal the deal on the last couple of segments. We've been talking about that. We were talking about 9-11 and how 9-11 brought us TSA and the fight against Islamic terrorism, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But regarding TSA, I guess we could seal it up this way. Despite my personal criticisms of some of what they do, some of what they do, uh, they're obviously doing a pretty good job, right? Because at the end of the day, how many terrorist incidents have we had on the planes since 9-11 here in the United States of America? So that said, they're doing a good job. They're doing a good job. I have many criticisms, but that said, they're keeping us safe so far. Uh, can I ask you this question? Of course, I'm broadcasting from San Francisco. What's wrong with my Congresswoman Nancy Pelosi? She, she I don't know if she's having a few pops before she hits the podium or if a situation where, you know, she's just getting a little older and is not quite as quick on stage as she used to be. But I've got another example of this woman absolutely losing it before an audience this weekend. So we've got the audio there. Got a montage of all of Hillary's excuses for losing the election. That's coming up. Plus, Democrats on a crusade against Christians. Oh, yes. Just wait. Sussman filling in on this, the Savage Nation. 
Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. You know, the reason why Savage's show is so good is because you never know where he's going to go. Seriously, you just have no idea. I've been listening to him since the mid-90s when he had the local show in San Francisco in the evening drive. Brian Sussman here filling in for Michael Savage. I host the morning show on that station, and I've gotten to know Savage really well through the radio after so many years of listening to him. And from the beginning, it was Borders Language Culture. Borders Language Culture. But then he would diverge into areas that were oftentimes incredibly hilarious. <laughs> like back in the back in the day, you know, this is before Craigslist, okay? He would read the personals from one of the... Uh, from from one of the uh, radical, more radical uh, newspapers, the personal ads. <laughs> uh, you know, this is guy seeking guy, guy seeking dog, woman seeking this. Well, oh, jeez, that was so funny. Anyway, uh, we share not just the same city, but we share the same congresswoman, Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> oh boy, listen, there's a ton. That, this woman used to be sly as a snake. You know, the, the old biblical adage, sly as a snake, innocent as a dove. She was sly as a snake and, and uh, clever as a fox, Nancy Pelosi. But maybe it's just a product of getting older and she's not quite as sharp on her feet as she used to be. I, I hope there's not something mentally wrong with her, although, you know, she is. If you look up uh, liberal in the dictionary, in the encyclopedia, you'll see her face pop up. And, and we know from listening to Mike over the years, liberalism is a mental disorder. That's been proven. But um, I'm guessing, I don't know, maybe it's the combination of age and she has a penchant for a few pops, if you know what I mean, adult beverages. Well, we know that because when she had that plane going, the, the uh, government plane flying, basically Air Force Three, flying between D.C. and San Francisco when she was... Uh, Speaker of the House. I mean, everyone's seen the bar tab, the bar bill that was became. I think Judicial Watch pried into it. Say, hey, we want to know what the bar bill. It was out. It was outrageous. And we're not talking about a little Chardonnay at thirty thousand feet. We're talking hardcore booze. So my guess is, just an educated guess. My guess is she has a pension for a few pops in the evening. Now, listen, I do a fair amount of speaking. And uh, I do enjoy an adult beverage from time to time. But I will tell you this, prior to speaking, never, ever, 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 ever. No, man, i got to be on top of my game. So maybe that's her problem. She's just getting a little too loosey-goosey out there. Because this has been happening repeatedly. She has these tr tremendous, problems, um, tremendous problems with enunciation. She gets Trump mixed up with Bush, sometimes Trump mixed up with Obama. But there's something that's happening in all of her speeches. These are prepared remarks, and she's on the teleprompter, and there are pauses for applauses. If you were to look at her speech as it's written out, there would be pauses for an applause. You know, applause lines, laugh lines, etc., and her delivery ain't what it used to be, obviously, because every time she hits one of these lines, the audience doesn't react. And I've been noticing this on her speeches on a regular basis with more frequency. She's continually telling people, that was a laugh line. You, you, go ahead, applause. You can, you can applaud now. It's embarrassing. So here she is, this huge LGBTQ gathering. And she is having a little trouble with the audience because they're not responding the way she would have them she would like them to respond take a listen to clip 1 
And we were very proud of the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell, and President Obama was so very much a part of that. Now, let's hear it for President Obama. <laughs> That's an applause line. <laughs> I'll tell you when it's an applause line if we're not kind of in sync. <laughs> And now we're fighting for the, something called the Equality Act, a historic comprehensive bill. And I will continue to do everything in our power to end discrimination in the workplace and in every other aspect of a life that ensures that all American families are viewed equally in the eyes of the law. That's an applause line. <laughs> and stop the bullying of the LGBT community, youth in our schools, and in our society. That's right. That's right. Stop the bulleting of our kids. Innovation S Stop must be the bulleting about of our inclusion. kids. Inclusion. That's what Sam's about. Sam Altman. All right. Applause line. Applause line. <laughs> She's goofy. The liberalism is attacking her brain. Here's another one who's just beyond goofy. I mean, this is a... This is, it's, can, you, uh, can you imagine... It's it's what you've longed for your entire life, and it was, I mean, truly, it was, it was, it was yours to lose, and you lost. Hillary. So she's out on the stump right now, preparing for the release of her book tomorrow. I believe it comes out tomorrow. What happened is the name of the book. <laughs> and in every one of these interviews, she does the same thing. Well, you know, I, I own it, and then she doesn't own it. She blames everybody under the sun. So this is a masterful editing job. <laughs> this is a masterful editing job. And uh, this is from CBS Sunday Morning. She's being interviewed by Jane Pauley. I didn't even know Jane Pauley was still on television. But there she is, these, these, two, uh, these two women who are, you know, middle age, talking it up, chatting it up, on the same team, huh? Softball interview, Hillary Clinton, all sorts of excuses... Nowhere does she admit that the people just didn't want her as president. Clip two. I'm not going to uh, step back from telling my truth. The idea of a woman president, white, authoritarian. There was something that was personal toward me. The Russians weaponizing information, negative stories about me. This whole WikiLeaks of John Podesta's emails. They were taken out of context. We now know no. Facebook, voter suppression. Feeds in. I think, to the whole sexism and misogyny. And the attacks oh, were so sexist. A lot of the sexism and the misogyny, and then let's not forget sexism and, and misogyny. No, I won't we forget. We really don't want a woman commander When it comes to Hillary, Nostalgia. I'm a misogynist. Yeah, of white people. <laughs> the forces that were at work, it was a perfect storm. Using personal email. Presented in such a negative way, I don't know, quite what audience he was playing to, right-wing commentators, right-wing members of Congress. But for that Comey letter, she would have won. So badly damaged because of that. Election. Eleven days before the election, it just stopped my momentum. Help me make sense of that. There was anger and there was resentment. A lot of people didn't want to hear my plans. Trump was behaving in a deplorable manner. A large number of people who didn't care. Oh, but they were already energized. But I don't buy that. And having him scowling and leering, it, it was right. so discombobulating back up you creep you know maybe i yeah, missed right. a few chances of you know my share of chardonnay i wanted to tell what happened and the primary was part of what happened won a landslide victory in the primary i didn't get the same respect from my primary opponent a lot of his supporters continue to harass well you're supporting a woman because you're a woman That's yes right. and they're still out there and bernie's not a democrat it's very uh hurtful enough enough Enough. Oh, this is just going to continue. And all this, <laughs> this is not doing anything to bring their base together. I think it's doing just the opposite. No one likes a sore loser, and that's exactly what she is. Now, I got one more clip for you. Brian Sussman, by the way, filling in for Dr. Michael Savage. Phone number is, as always, 855-400-7282. This is a really disturbing story, and it's not being widely covered. Uh, last week... Several Democrats attacked a federal judicial nominee. Amy Coney Barrett is her name. Now, Amy Coney Barrett is a professor at the Notre Dame Law School. She is also Catholic. In fact, she describes herself as being Orthodox Catholic, which means she's a true believer. 
She likes to obey the rules, and okay, more power to her. I, I like people who aren't hypocrites in any religion. I like the people who aren't hypocrites. So it's amazing because I thought that there was supposed to be no religious test for appointments such as these, in this particular case, a federal judge. I thought there was no religious test. <laughs> now, could you imagine if, if she were a Muslim woman and Republicans were attacking her in the same fashion, it would be all over the front page of every newspaper, top story of every radio newscast, lead story in every television show. But, oh, no, in this particular case, ah, eh, turn away, nothing to see here. So here they are. It's, we've got just a variety. It's uh, Dick Durbin. You're going to hear Bernie Sanders, Dianne Feinstein. They're going after this woman in a, in a way, and it's like, it's like a witch hunt. Uh, take a listen to this clip. That was a brilliant job of editing by the Free Beacon. Uh, that, that's frightening. You know, this, this party of tolerance, right? So intolerant. So absolute intolerant. All right. Brian Sussman filling in on this, the Savage Nation. Uh, so much talk today about this Apple phone. So wh what is the big deal with this phone? Uh, do you know that it's costing $999? <laughs> the question I have is, okay, you got the new phone, Apple, um, and I, I'm an iPhone user. I know most people aren't, but I am. I did. I thought, well, if I own stock of the company, I should probably have one of these phones. The thing that I can't stand about the phone is the camera. I see other people. I have a friend who works for a, uh, a son who works for a competitor, and uh, he he always shows me his phones. I'm like, what? When are they going to fix the, the When are they going to fix the camera? So we'll talk about that. We'll take your calls as well on everything we've been chatting about this afternoon, this evening, depending on where you are. 855-400-7282. 855-400-7282. Brian Sussman on this, The Savage Nation. Join The Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. It's a huge story. It really is. Well, and I can't I hear Brian Sussman filling in for Michael Savage. I'm in the Silicon Valley, San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, so here in the Valley, the Valley, uh, it's it's a big deal. This unveiling of the new Apple phone and the new Apple watch and the new Apple. Uh, there was something else. Oh, and the new Apple TV. So it's a big deal here, but it's a big deal all over the place. The uh, stock didn't really bust out today after after these announcements were made. But it's the iPhone. People will probably say the iPhone X, but I'm told, no, it's actually the iPhone 10. So there's the new Model 8, 699, the Plus, 799, and the 10 for 999. It, it's amazing, the priorities. you know. And the millennials, of course, if you're a millennial listening to this program, you have your head on straight. Okay, you're, you're okay. You're good. We don't have to worry about you. Probably have a job, you're working hard, you got a career plan, career path, you're socking away your money, you're trying to do the right thing. Good, I love you. I want you around, I want you to be in charge when I'm an old man with drool coming out of the side of my mouth pushing a walker, okay? I want you in charge. But in the meantime, you look at some of these other millennials, right? I'm convinced if the government came in, you could have a heavy handed socialist leader who says, All right, it's time. We've done our thing. It's ready to take over. <laughs> Could have been Hillary, for all I know. If you offered some of these millennials, okay, you'll get your you'll get your new iPhone, free wireless. So free iPhone, free wireless, free Starbucks, and annually. Oh, and then you know Obamacare, and. Once a year, you get a free tattoo. I think they'd say, yes, I'm in. Thank you. That's all they need. iPhone for free, free wireless, free Starbucks, free, what else did I say? Free Obamacare, of course, and then a free tattoo once a year. Yes, I, anything. I'm good. Yes, that's America. Anyway, I'm looking at this new iPhone, 
And my criticism has been the camera. Oh, hey, they have wireless charging. As one of the producers of the Savage Nation told me a moment ago, hey, finally, it took you 10 years. <laughs> it's, it's about time. But uh, they, they do apparently have, quote, the highest quality video capture ever in a smartphone. Well, okay, that's about time, right? I mean, cheapers. Their, their cameras have been the absolute worst. Worse. Um, uh, face ID. Why, am I sh- why should I be excited about Face ID? You unlock the phone simply by looking at it and then swiping up. So there's no more home button or password. Face ID is the thing. What if I have a scowl on my face? What if I'm not feeling well? What if I'm wearing a ski mask? Not because I'm about to rob a bank because it's cold outside. Uh, what if I've grown a beard? Can it still do this? What if i got a beard and sunglasses? How about that? Just kind of curious. I want to know all the answers to these questions. The iPhone 8. So this is a big deal. The most exciting new feature, they say, is the wireless charging. <laughs> They've also got the Apple, new Apple TV, new and improved, and the Apple Watch. That's the other one, the Apple Watch, where your, your watch now essentially becomes your iPod. And the Apple TV, they probably have to do some catching up to be as cool as a Roku, because I know a lot of people are way into the Roku. So these are some of the things we're talking about on the Savage Nation. Now, just around the corner, there are some stories that you wouldn't believe. There's actually an abortion clinic that's offering free abortions to Harvey victims. There is more to the story, and you're going to hear that coming up on the Savage Nation. Um, We've also got a story about police in Portland purging their gang database uh, because they're purging the gang database because there aren't enough white gangs. Uh, Another crazy story we'll get to. Brian Sussman filling in right here on this, The Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Oh my gosh. The new iPhone 10 will be able to create an animated poop emoji based on the scan of your face. Brian Sussman here, filling in for Dr. Michael Savage on the Savage Nation. We were just in the last segment, we were talking about the new iPhone. <laughs> but the best, the best, the best headlines always come from Matt Drudge. I'm just saying. <laughs> Here, wait, guys, behind the scenes, just go to uh, Robert Jim, go to drudgereport.com. Uh, right now, it's trending at uh, right in the, the, the right on top, middle aisle. Look at his. <laughs> uh, iPhone blank face. It rhymes with sit. <laughs> The iPhone blank face. What, can I, I just asked, what is it with this poop emoji that's so... What, what has happened to the society? Oh, my gosh. Well, I guess if Antifa's, you know, hurling bags of it now, I guess that's how it's become mainstream. They're doing this for Antifa. Speaking of Antifa, here's Marco. Marco checking in from Florida. First of all, Marco, where are you in Florida? How you doing? Hey, I'm doing good, Brian. I'm I'm actually on my way back from uh, Panama City. We left. I'm from St. Augustine, and I took my family and we left. We went we went to uh, Panama City. So I'm sitting in a little bit of traffic on the way back right now. How are you? Well, I'm doing well. How do you think your house held up? Uh, I called my neighbor. He said we only lost power for about eight hours because we have like underground. We have underground electricity, so. Usually that's the best way. It doesn't get hit too bad. So we're Got all it. said the house is good. Everything's good. Okay, so you're you're a okay. In your opinion, uh, was your area of Florida hit harder or not quite as hard as you might have been anticipating? No, it was it was definitely hit harder. There's people that are they're posting like all this stuff on Facebook that it was news propaganda and all this. 
this craziness, and I mean, I'll be the first to say it when they do that, but this this was bad. Jacksonville got hit really bad. St. Augustine's completely flooded. My mom's house got completely flooded down in Flagler Beach. Like, it's, it, it was pretty bad. It was a big storm. It was huge. It was definitely huge. Okay, so you're making a good point. I was just mentioning the, the poop emoji that Apple's got out on its new phone. Everybody's all excited. I think, well, maybe we have to mainstream uh, We have to mainstream poop now because groups like Antifa, this is one of their weapons of choice, bags of human poop that they throw at, uh, at the, uh, the people that they hate so much. Well, you know what's funny? I think it's funny that... Like, whenever you see a personal attack, like on our president, or whenever he says some real stuff, all these groups come out, like Black Lives Matter, and this one says that. But during a disaster, like after this disaster, I haven't seen not one of those far-right groups come out and Good show point. that they're helping in any kind of way. Good point. That they're, they're a hindrance to society altogether, and I don't know how they're able to get, get this far with, with what they've done. I think it's a real shame. I'm ex-military. And I just think it's an absolute shame, and I don't know how they're not, they don't get in trouble. If I did half the stuff they did, I'd be in prison. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You sure would. Um, it is amazing, though, right? Where's Black Lives Matter? Where's Antifa giving hurricane relief? Instead, you see these Christian organizations, Christian. Uh, for example, everything from the Salvation Army on down the line, other uh, secular groups that uh, just have a, a great heart of thinking of the Red Cross, etc. They're all down there. They're all helping. So where's the heart of Antifa and Black Lives Matter? Nowhere to be found, but wait till the next. Wait till Trump says something real again, and they'll they'll show their faces again. I mean, it's, of course, Trump, Trump says something real, and it's honest and it's truth. Like when he said both sides were involved, it was both sides. I mean, I, I don't understand how it's not one side no. was doing this, the other side did that, and then he gets ridiculed and, and, and criticized for that. And the other it's, guy that was in there for eight years, he just. I don't even know his name. I mean, he should be forgotten in history. Well, he, he will be forgotten quickly, especially as many things are done in this administration to reverse his policies and the legacy he built for himself to be carried on and furthered by Hillary. So, hey, Marco, all the best to you, man, and I'm glad to hear things are okay down in Florida at your place. Um, it, okay, here's, here's another story. Can you believe this with the hurricane? You've got this abortion clinic offering free abortion to Harvey victims. So this is a Texas abortion clinic. They've raised enough money to provide 15 abortions for Hurricane Harvey victims. And you're, you're asking yourself, why? What? So the clinic has set up a relief fund for women whose appointments to get abortions were postponed by the storm. So Amy Hagstram Miller, Miller founder and CEO of Whole Women's Health, said... There's really not a safety net, especially when it comes to health care. This is not health care. This is not health care. This is aborting babies. That's what this is, plain and simple. This is not health care. In very few cases are abortions conducted for the literal health of a woman. Now, if you allow the Democrats and the liberals to go down that road, they say, well, it's the mental health of a woman. One of the great disasters in all of this, and I've heard this from so many of my uh, friends who have had abortions in their past, and I know this from uh, people who work for uh, like pregnancy uh, crisis pregnancy centers and, and those types of groups around the country, which my wife and I have supported for years. Um, but the bottom line, and then I have a daughter who's also a marriage and family counselor dealing with young women. One of the great tragedies is if Planned Parenthood was so damned concerned about women's health, they would offer post-abortion counseling. Because from everything I've ever heard, women really need that. So if they're all about women's health, how about that for starters? In the meantime, we flip the page. Some of the other stories are just absolutely crazy. Okay, here is one regarding the Portland police. Police in Portland are purging their gang databases because there aren't enough white gangs. So they don't want to look as if they're profiling anybody. So literally, police in Portland, an incredibly liberal city, it's, it's an Antifa headquarter, a Black Lives Matter headquarter, they will no longer maintain a database of suspected gang members due to concerns that the vast majority of people with gangs are racial minorities. Well, they are. 
And the gangs know this. I mean, look, I'm here in California. Hello. The greater Bay Area, you have the Norteños and the Serenos. The Norteños know that the Serenos are guys from Mexico who are from Mexico. And the Serenos know that the Norteños are Mexicans who were born in America. Norteños, Serenos. I get it. And then you look at the... Uh, Look at the, the black gangs. The black gangs hate the Mexican gangs and hate the Latin gangs. Then you've got MS-13. They're primarily El Salvadorian. They all, they all know what race one another happens to be. Oh, but we don't have enough white gangs. Oh, okay. So officials intend... Now listen, this is what they're doing in Portland. This is ludicrous. If you're in Portland in law enforcement, maybe you can help me out. Maybe I'm missing something. Officials intend to notify the approximately 300 people on the gang list, that the Bureau, the Portland Police Bureau, will purge all records related to the designation. So they're going so far as to tell, hey, we just want to let you know that we're now no longer considering you to be a member of a Mexican gang. Hey, we just want to let you know that we're no longer going to say you're part of that El Salvadorian gang, MS-13, okay? It's all good. That'll make you happy, won't it? So Captain Mike Krantz says, we're not pretending gang violence doesn't exist. We're just taking this one thing away. City officials and community activists have long urged the Bureau to stop attaching the gang designation to criminal suspects, claiming the practice disproportionately impacted people of color. Well, that's their own fault for being gang members. Oh, my gosh. I mean, community activists are actually now involved with police department policy. This is stupid. So under the current policy, which is about to be changed, under the current policy, police officers can add someone to the gang database if the person self-identifies as a gang member, which they always do because they're proud of it, participates in a gang initiation ritual, which they all do and they're proud of it, or commits a gang-related crime, which a lot of guys have to do to get into the gang or to maintain their position in the gang or to get uh, a raise in the gang, like, you know, hey, want a new car? Take care of this person. Or displays two or more observable signs of gang membership. So I guess no longer. So when the officer runs the name of a person who's been flagged as a gang member, the label will show up in a special report that includes any known information about nicknames, employers, schools, vehicles, etc. So they're going to purge the database. Done. Don't need this. What's the first thing that happens every time? It doesn't matter what liberal city you live in. I'm sure it takes place in New York City. I'm sure it takes place in Chicago. I know it takes place in San Francisco. If you're reporting a crime, the first thing they ask you is, male or female, what's the person's race? Boom. The cops want to know, what's the big deal? It's, oh, it's racist. No, it's not. It's, it's identifying a suspect. So that person can be properly apprehended. My gosh. Okay, so that's a crazy story for you. Police in Portland purging their gang database because there aren't enough white gangs. Oh, here we go. Ah, the religion of peace. A UK imam tells his congregation to spill blood and establish the law of Allah. Isn't that wonderful? No, he didn't really say that. He didn't mean that. He's a lone wolf. No, this is an imam preaching in a mosque in the UK told Muslims to be ready to spill blood and establish the law of Allah over the necks of the people, including the queen. This was testimony in a court of law. This guy's a 40-year-old imam. Imam. He was caught. How was he caught? Oh, my goodness. The mosque was infiltrated by an undercover police officer. I remember after 9-11, they were doing that in New York City. Rudy Rudy Giuliani was instituting that. No longer. Ooh, that's hateful. Can't do that. Oh, let me see here. Call to punish skeptics um, who uh, deny climate change. Okay, calls to punish global warming skepticism as a criminal offense have surged in the aftermath of Hurricane Harvey and Irma. Climate change denial should be a crime. Oh, that's just wonderful. Uh, Meantime, oh, this is San Diego. I didn't know San Diego has this problem. They've got, a, they've got a hepatitis A outbreak. 16 people dead. Hundreds infected. 
So why, this is in areas frequented by homeless people. So remember we just talked about the, the poop emoji? Okay. That's what's going on with the homeless. They're going everywhere. This fecally contaminated, the, the fecally contaminated downtown sidewalks. And people are picking up these diseases because of what's going on there. So they're using a bleach, a bleach solution to spray down sidewalks where homeless people gather and uh, etc. Disin- by disin- here's what they're saying. By disinfecting our sidewalks and making additional public restrooms available 24-7, we're following the direction of county health officials. In San Francisco, they actually have a, they've got the, uh, the poop mobile. Well, they don't call it that, but the locals do. It's a flatbed truck with an outhouse. Uh, with out, a couple outhouses and sinks, and so they pull into these homeless neighborhoods, and the homeless neighbor, uh, the hopeless people, are able to climb up and do their business. That's all great, but it assumes that the homeless people only go during the day when the uh, flatbeds show up, because it's a mess. So here's a word for the wise. This is my my wife has been on my case recently about this. My wife is one of those people, you come into my house, you take off your shoes, period. Just take off your shoes. I'm the kind of guy who says, like, oh, can I just keep them on until I go on the carpet? She says, absolutely not. Once she hears about this story from San Diego, she's going to say, see, I told you so. Your feet are tracking all this stuff. I don't want this hepatitis in my house. Take your shoes off. Okay, I'll do that. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Cool. What else do you want me to do? <laughs> On the Savage Nation. Brian Sussman filling in. We still have some time for your calls. 855-400-SAVAGE. Michael Savage is back tomorrow. Don't forget, for all your latest news, michaelsavage.com. Brian Sussman on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Oh, this is Rich. Brian Sussman here on the Savage Nation. Michael's back tomorrow. So Hillary has her big event at the Barnes & Noble Union Square, New York. This is for the release of the book. <laughs> what happened? Uh, so it was supposed to start at 11 o'clock this morning. She didn't get there till noon. Thousands of people in line. Here was the deal. In order to get her signature, no personalizations whatsoever. You had to buy a book. And you had to have a wristband proving that you bought a book. Then you had to stay in line, check your backpack or purse at the door. She was supposed to be there at 11. She doesn't show up until noon. Typical Hillary Clinton. You have all these people waiting to see you. So she finally gets there. All these sycophants right off the bat. Hillary! Hillary! Crowded cheers, applauds, patiently waits uh, for her to speak, and she doesn't speak. She goes up to a raised platform sits down, and starts signing. No hello to the crowd. No thanks for hours of waiting. Some people were there yesterday waiting in line for this event. Some people got hotel rooms to be there. None of that. Decades of support, nothing. No apology for being late an hour. (laughs) Not a single word. Just sat down and started signing. I'm reading here in the uh, New York Post... Waiting patiently to Hillary's right, far uh, mere feet from the stage, was a line of wheelchair seniors. Hey, guys, I need everybody to move out of the way, one staffer said. Another staffer hijacked a fan's wheelchair, saying, hey, we're going for a ride, buddy. Another attendee said, what? She's not going to speak? A person on Hillary's staff said, nope, this is all you're getting. Typical Hillary Clinton class on display, or the lack thereof. My gosh. Of course, in the book, we've told we're going to see a different Hillary, a humbled candidate taking personal responsibility for the loss. But what the people in New York saw today is the real deal. Hillary. Thank God this woman isn't president of the United States. I'm serious about that. Hey, always a pleasure. Always an honor. Always a good time. Brian Sussman, we've been filling in on the Savage Nation. MichaelSavage.com for all your latest headlines. Michael's back tomorrow.